Hey there, the last time we took a look at the HP Elite Desk Mini here, we saw the performance that it had and unfortunately the limitations that come with this specific system. But there is a potential saving grace to this system. And the key to all of this is this little slot right here. See, this is actually a PCIe 16x slot. And what makes that slot really exciting is the fact that we can use this on there. This right here is a AMD RX 564 gigabyte specifically designed to function in this chassis. I've known about the existence of this card for a little while now, from pretty much the very first time that I took a look at this system, but at that time, these particular cards were going for over $200 a pop, making them effectively worthless. But things are drastically different now where you can actually pick up this card for $60. And at $60, it becomes a lot more compelling of an option. But first, this video is brought to you by Instant Gaming, your best source for finding cheap games. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you might notice that I test a wide variety of different games on a bunch of different systems. And well, I pay for all of those games myself. And thanks to Instant Gaming, I'm actually able to get some great deals on some of the latest titles so I can get some major savings. I've actually been a customer of Instant Gaming since even before they reached out to partner with me. But as soon as that I saw that they reached out, I jumped at the chance to work with them because I know that they have a proven track record. And to celebrate this new partnership, Instant Gaming and I are hosting a giveaway. If you click the link down below, you can sign up for a chance to win any game in the Instant Gaming catalog. So click the link down below for your chance to win and check out some amazing savings on some of the latest titles. Thank you, Instant Gaming, for sponsoring the channel. There are some drawbacks to using this. Of course, we do lose the SATA SSD cage, so we're only left with using the M.2 slot. And of course, we are going to have to pop off this little module here that gives us our only HDMI port. And unfortunately, this graphics card here actually only has a display port, which means that for me to capture any of this footage, I'm going to have to use a display port to HDMI adapter. Not really earth shattering or any, anything like that, but definitely a little annoying. But actually getting the card in here is extremely easy. You pretty much just pop it in and all you have to do is screw it down on the same mounting holes where the hard drive cage was at and you're pretty much good to go. There are a few caveats to getting this to actually work though, and the main thing being that the standard 90 watt power adapter that this came with will not function. You're going to need to get the 150 watt power brick or HP. You can normally find it on eBay or Amazon for around 10 to $20. It really just depends. I ended up paying $11 for this one here, and it worked perfectly fine with this. But just keep that in mind because that is essentially an added cost onto the graphics card. So even though I paid 60 for this card with this on top of it, we're looking more at a $70 card, which still is not a bad value at all. Though we have to see what this actually does to the performance, because this might actually end up being the cheapest way that you can get a mini PC with a full dedicated graphics card suddenly not only is this the cheapest ryzen mini pc you can get it's now the cheapest mini pc you can get that can hold a full graphics card in it let's see what that actually even did to the performance so to start off we're taking a look at alien isolation a title that is more relevant to when this hardware was first released here we're taking a look at it running on the igpu and then we're looking at it running with the rx 564 gigabyte and here we're seeing a clear improvement in overall performance, though it's not as substantial as I was kind of expecting to see from a dedicated graphics card. I guess I should have tempered my expectations here, but still seeing a essentially 30% increase in both the FPS average and 1% lows is still pretty substantial, and it does boost this title from being a mid-40s FPS gaming experience up to almost 60 FPS. And considering the title itself is running at ultra, this is nice to see. Remember, the RX 560 wasn't exactly a high-end graphics card when it first released, let alone all these years later. Moving ahead, just a year later, we have Batman Arkham Knight releasing and still to this day remaining a very tough title to run for this low-end hardware. And nowhere was that more apparent when we were running this title on the 2400G. The 2400G should normally give you a better result than this, but on the 
HP Elite Desk Mini, it is just way too limited that the performance is pretty disastrous. And here we actually end up seeing some of the largest increase in terms of performance, where we see an 85% increase in the FPS average, which is already an impressive result, but it's made even more impressive by the 290% increase in our 1% lows. That essentially take this from a disaster to a incredible gaming experience. And if you're willing to sacrifice some FPS here, you can start to turn up some of the graphics settings and you'd still have an above 30 FPS gaming average. In general though, this was a really impressive result to see and funny to think that it is a bigger jump than I Alien Isolation was. Now moving over to the first title that we're taking a look at that was released after the launch of the 2400G, we have Tiny Tina's Wonderland releasing four years later. And here the title running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR with the performance preset, we see a very minuscule increase in the overall FPS average, which is a great result on both, but a pretty substantive 47% increase in the 1% lows, which means that when you're playing the game, there is going to be a noticeable difference between the two. You can see that in those frame times. Those two charts are just drastically different and you're going to feel that in actual gameplay. So there is still a pretty substantive improvement here, though you might not see it in the FPS average. And of course, this is the first title that we're taking a look at with FSR, and FSR is a godsend for these low-end chips and graphics cards. But as impressive as the results have been so far, really one of the biggest disasters is Helldivers 2. Now we're really getting into very modern titles, and here things just fell apart even running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and using fsr with the performance preset we don't see really all that much of a difference with only an eight percent increase in the fps average and no increase at all in the one percent lows this is effectively going to be the same level of performance disappointing to see considering it's a modern title and it would be nice to actually get a boost here that would get us a lot closer to a 60 fps average and really more importantly see those one percent lows go above 30 but i guess at least we didn't see a regression in performance so if you have this system and you get this graphics card for it it's not like there's going to be a downside to it hell divers is just going to be as bad as it was on the stock system and at least other games are going to perform better but this was really really disappointing to see and it carried over across multiple missions this was one of those situations where this was so weird that i really wanted to see if there was anything i could do to fix it and it was just consistently like this my best guess is the fact that since Polaris and Vega both aren't really getting any driver optimization. Helldivers is kind of just disastrous on both of them. Thankfully, that was not the case for Ghost of Tsushima, where here, running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and using FSR at the performance preset, we do see a noticeable difference in the overall results. Though still not as high as I would like to have seen it, we are looking at a 30 per 4% increase in the FPS average and a 30% increase in the 1% lows. So some pretty massive gains. Of course, FSR is doing a lot of heavy lifting here and those 1% lows still aren't reaching a le level where I would be happy with. That said though, this is a $60 upgrade that you can do for a system that is already extremely cheap. And this brings it in line a lot more towards modern hardware. And I'm actually very curious now to see how this would compare against something like the 780M. If you're interested in seeing a comparison like that, let me know down below. But overall, these results have been very interesting to see. So is this upgrade worthwhile? Well, for $60, I can't really see a reason to not do this, really. If you noticed, while I was actually playing all of those games, the temperatures on both the CPU and the GPU were lower than things were when we were just using the APU by itself. It makes sense. A good chunk of the APU is now not doing anything because the graphics chip doesn't need to render anything. So temperatures in general are just going to be lower. And in a lot of the titles, you'll actually see that the CPU is clocking slightly slightly higher that has to do with the fact that it again is not competing with the igpu for power so more of the juice can be dedicated to boosting that cpu and the fact that it's not hitting higher temperatures means that there is more headroom for clocking up higher i think that in general this is a really worthwhile upgrade that makes a system like this 
extremely competitive with modern hardware. I'm going to be doing a video comparing this with the 780M because I'm really curious to see if this is as good or even potentially better than that is. Considering that the entire upgrade process here, even with the power adapter, still didn't cost me $200 in total for the system, the GPU, and the power brick, I think that this is really an insane value i don't know how long these gpus are going to be available at these prices i mean it is a very specific model so once they're gone they're gone so if you're thinking about picking one of these up i would suggest doing that as soon as possible because you really don't know if these are gonna disappear off of the market i'm actually really glad that i got my hands on this i'll see you guys in the next one